7 Camaro SS all in primer and ready to be blocked. My plan of attack is to use this block as such. And stop right there because the panel goes in. And then I'll use this block with about this much paper on it, not paper going across the whole width of the block. And kind of get this plane. And this takes care of the transition between this and this. And it doesn't really go into this all that much. This block also is good going into here. So I'll go into here like this. And then, right here, it curls. So you don't want to have a block situated this way because there's a gap right here that I can clearly see. So, for right here, I'll take this block, go upwards, like that. And for here, I'll use this one because there's a slight bend. For the crown, I'll use this round block with about that much paper. The block lights up. For this bottom piece, I'll do a couple strokes with this block right here. You can't do too many because there's not a lot of room because there's a little lip right here and you got this so just do a few of them and then I'll switch to the chair drop and do the rest and right where this lip is where it goes outwards I'll kind of go like that for this flat area right here I'll take paper about that wide block like such for this lip, I have a block that has that shape into it. So, block like that. I use a round block. But I'll also do some strokes with this block because I like this edge going up to this edge. It leaves it nice and sharp on the edges. So I'll probably come with this first, do a couple strokes here, and then obviously I'll notice it's not standing equally in the bottom, the lowest point. And then I'll come back with this. When you're planning on using these two blocks, you don't have to have paper on both of them because you can easily unpeel this and put this on the round block. When you're done with the round block, you can put it back.
even though I have paper all the way across the block, all the pressure is applied on one side. So about half of it isn't even touching the panel. It's like that. Only using the amount that I need. If I use any more, I'll start cutting into it. block the hood and like I showed you in the Mustang video I like to only have the outer edge being supported because uh, if you have it pushing up in the middle of the hood it creates high spots so we're good to go this usually takes a couple 2x4s or two stands and uh, hoods are usually the most messed up part of the car Fortunately, on this one, the right quarter was, and uh, this is what I call the truth block. This uh, this block doesn't play favorites. It'll tell you everything about the panel. Any side up eggs? Anyone? Yeah, so the truth block told me something I didn't really want to see. High spot. And uh, I'm pretty sure this was on the stand the wrong way when it was getting primed. And uh, sometimes when you throw the stand and they're pushing up on the supports in the middle. It stays that way, and then you have to metal work it. So sometimes it'll relax and go back down. But uh, I'm assuming the stand was right about there, and these two areas are where two pieces of foam are that are adhered to the outer skin, and it's pushing up on it. So when I get to blocking that side, I'm assuming there's going to be two more of these. Over there. Not only do you have to put hoods and deck lids on stands very carefully in consideration to the supports underneath that press up against the outer skin, you also have to evaluate the damage very differently. In your metalwork stage, you must determine if any highs and lows are caused by the supports themselves. You can check this by dinging lightly on the infected areas to see if it feels more dense and more solid than it normally would. Kind of like drywall with a 2x4 behind it. If there's too many areas like this, they must be separated from the supports and re-adhered to the outer skin. You can cut it away with the mini air saw, but a good scraper will work as well. So we got the Camaro jammed, and now what we'd normally do is we'd immediately put back on the doors, but I don't have any help right now, so I'm going to wait till Blaine comes, and then we're going to put the doors on. And uh, the doors are over there, and they're jammed as well, but we're going to paint the hood and the deck lid off the car. The reason why we paint the hood and deck lid off the car is because on the stand they're in a horizontal position which is relatively close to the natural position that they lay in when they're closed so the metallic will settle how you want it but doors are on the car sideways and on the stand they lay on their back so 
you could possibly get a difference in look if you were to paint the outside of the doors on the stand as opposed to on the car because the metallic will lay there differently so uh, right now I'm gonna block whatever I can until Blaine gets here and then we're gonna get the doors on and then uh, I'll proceed from there So we're wrapping up the blocking stage, and it turned out pretty well for only one coat of primer on there. And uh, this right here, that's primer, and uh, that was just me chasing a piece of overspray out, but it's still primer, so not bare metal. And the reason why this blocked out so well is what we did before this stage. So I'm pretty happy about how this is going to turn out for not being a show car. It's going to be pretty good. And uh, this is important right here. You see that overspray on the fender? You got to get that out because uh, that's adhering to unscuff primer. And when you throw your base in clear, onto the uh, outer surfaces that might lift so we gotta sand that out better so uh, we blocked everything out and now we're just doing the uh, final touches along the edges and stuff like that so Thank you.